أعوذ بالله سمين عليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear students this is biology SS2 biology SS2 third term I welcome you all to the class and I believe you are all with your writing materials to judge. The first thing we are going to look at as usual is the scheme of work. For the first week we are going to have uh, the respiratory system that is internal respiration. In the second week, respiratory sy system external respiration. In the third week, we are going to have the mechanism of excretion in some organisms. Fourth week also, we continue with excretory system. That is excretion in mammals. In the fifth week, we shall look at reproductive system, that is the types of reproduction. Sixth week also, we are going to analyze asexual reproduction. In the seventh week, we continue with asexual reproduction. Eighth week, we shall explain sexual reproduction in organisms. Ninth week also, sexual reproduction will continue. And in the tenth week, we are going to do the revision before the examination. I pray Almighty Allah to be with us. Now, for the first week, which is respiratory system. Respiration, as we have discussed in SS1, we defined it as a, a biological, <coughs> as a biochemical activity of the cell in which glucose is broken down by series of reactions controlled by enzymes to release energy. Respiratory system is made up of various organs that are responsible for taking in oxygen and removal of carbon dioxide from the body. And this is called breathing. The goal of respiratory system is to make sure that oxygen is delivered into the body system or the body cells and carbon dioxide is uh, taken out. The lungs is the main organ of respiration in most terrestrial organisms. Oxygen is taken in, which breaks down the food substances that is glucose we have stored, the, the body has stored, in order to release energy, carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water are regarded as waste product of respiration. So the energy so released is used by living organisms for their life activities. This occurs inside the organism, cell organism, that is mitochondria, which is the site for respiration. Phases of respiration or stages there are two major phases or stages of respiration. We have external respiration as well as internal or tissue or cellular respiration. External respiration, otherwise known as breathing, has to do with exchange of gases between the organism and its environment, that is, exchange of gases between the environment of an organism and the respiratory organs of such organisms. The respiratory organs taking this oxygen into the body system and this is called inspiration or inhalation. Why the carbon dioxide produced by the body cells are removed from the body into the atmosphere 
And this process is otherwise known as expiration or exhalation. For internal respiration, which is otherwise known as tissue or cellular respiration, as we have discussed this in SS1 under cellular respiration, we said that uh, internal respiration is the oxidation of organic food substances within the cell, which leads to the release of energy, carbon dioxide, and water. This respiration occurs in, the, in, in two forms or in two stages. We have glycolysis and Krebs cycle. In glycolysis, little or no oxygen is used for oxidation of glucose, and only two ATP is released for use. Also, glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell, and then little oxy or energy is released, as I've mentioned. But this enters into Krebs cycle, whereby we have aerobic respiration, a type of respiration that involves the use of oxygen. Oxygen breaks down or oxidizes the food substances and energy, carbon dioxide and water are released for, this, for, the, for the cell to use. This can be represented by chemical equation, that is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 reacting together in order to release 6H2O water, 6CO2 carbon dioxide, and energy, which is the ATP. The purpose of respiration is to generate energy required for metabolic activities and all other activities within the cell for life process. Types of respiratory system. The structure used by different organisms for respiration divers. The unicellular organisms tend to have a simpler mode of respiratory system, while multicellular have a complex type. Organism uses the type of respiratory system depending on the type, complexity, size, and habitat of such organism. Different organisms and their respiratory structures are explained on, uh, 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 below. We have the unicellular organisms, such as amoeb and paramecium. These organisms make use of their body service for exchange of gases. Hydra and tapeworm uses cell membrane. Headworm make use of wet skin for body service. Fishes such as tilapia fish or most aquatic organisms make use of their gills. The arthropods such as insects and crustaceans make use of a trachea system. The arachnids and spiders, are the arachnids such as spiders, scorpions, make use of long book. Tadpoles uses gills in water. Reptiles, that is lizard, they make use of lung. Amphibians, such as toad or frog, as the after the respiratory organs, that is the mouth, the skin, and the lung. The apes, that is the birds, make use of their lung for respiration. Mammals also use uses the, their lung. And the, the flowering plant have a tiny or tiny holes or pores on their surface, uh, on their surfaces, 
called the stomata and lenticels. We have the stomata on the surface of the leaf, while lenticels on the surface of the stem. These are small openings or tiny openings that allow exchange of gases. Now, respiratory surface. This respiratory organ, <coughs> the respiratory organs, whether in plants or animals, must have a certain characteristic in common, which will enable the exchange of gases to occur. Therefore, such respiratory surface must have certain features, as I've mentioned. Respiratory surface refers to the definite surface of the body, such as the surface of the lung or gill, where gaseous exchange takes place. Such respiratory surface must have the following features. One, it must be moist because gases diffuse in solution through them. Two, it must be permeable to allow gases to pass in and out of them. Three, it must be thin walled to shorten diffusion distance and uh, make diffusion easier and faster. Respiratory surface also must have adequate supply of transport medium, that is blood. Also, it must have a large surface area to head easy diffusion of gases. And finally, respiratory surface must be highly vascularized, that is, it must be well equipped with blood vessels of capillaries or similar network to bring in and out uh, diffused gases. Mechanism of respiratory system. The unicellular organisms. The unicellular organisms have no special respiratory organs, such as amoeba, paramecium, oxygen that dissolves in water, diffuses into their body, while carbon dioxide goes out of the body through the entire body surface. Therefore, the cell membrane acts as the respiratory surface. The concentration of oxygen in water is higher than that of the internal part of the organism. Therefore, the division of gases into the body cells becomes easier. On the other hand, carbon dioxide inside the body of higher <coughs> inside the body is higher than that of the water. Therefore, it will diffuse out of the body. The process of gaseous exchange in unicellular organism is made possible by simple diffusion. Because the organisms have a large surface area to volume ratio. Therefore, diffusion through the body surface alone is enough to satisfy the gaseous exchange. Insect. The insect generally use the tracheal system for their gaseous exchange. These organisms have tiny openings on their abdominal region called spiracles, through which oxygen diffuses into the body and carbon dioxide diffuses out. These spiracles lead to the trachea internally, and the trachea also branches into several trachios, which enters into every living cell in the organism. Look at this diagram. If you look at the abdominal region of this organism, you are going to see tiny spores, a tiny pores, that is the tiny opening of spiracle. 
Through this tiny opening, gases enters into the organism, and the spiracle leads to trachea internally, and trachea branches into many tractures, which get into every living cell in order to supply such organism, uh, such oxygen. Why carbon dioxide produced by the body cells are also sent out through the trachea to the trachea and trachea to the spiracle, which takes it out of the body. The following <coughs> diagram shows the spiracle, that is the tiny opening of spiracle, which leads to trachea and trachea branches into many tracheas inside the body cell. So, gases enter through the spiracle and it moves in into the inner side of the insect in that way. Insects such as cockroach, grasshopper, etc., use the trachea system, and the insects perform what we refer to as a breathing movement that is compression and relaxation of the abdominal region. This compression and relaxation of the abdominal region become, make the abdominal region to become flattened and the hair is expelled from the trachea through the spiracles. When it relaxes, that is when the abdominal region relaxes, the body here enters into the trachea and from the trachea to the tracheus. During the process of compression and relaxation of the body, oxygen in the air taken in dissolves in the body fluid at the end of the trachea from where it enters into the various cells. When carbon dioxide from the cells Diffuses, diffuses into the body fluid, then into the trachea, and finally comes out of the insect through the spiracle. Now, mechanism of respiration in higher animals. One, we look at the fishes. This, this diagram shows that the head region of the fish and we have uh, one area where we have uh, the gill filament, the gill arc, and the gill reca. It is the region of the gill chamber where respiration takes place. This gill chamber is covered outward by operculum, which opens and closes as uh, the need uh, bees. The organ of respiration or for gaseous exchange in fishes is the gill. The gills are located at both sides of the head region and they are arranged in three or four rows in the gill chamber. Each gill consists of gill filament. The gill filament is made for gaseous exchange. The gill reca which helps to stop food particles from entering into the gill chamber and the gill arc. It is the structure on which the gill filament are built. The gill chamber is enclosed externally by the papillum. When the fishes want to breathe, it first closes the operculum and then opens its mouth and lowers the floor of the mouth. Water which contains the soft oxy oxygen rush into the mouth. The fish then closes its mouth, raises the, fo the, the floor of the mouth and the water rush into the gill chamber where the gill filament make use of the oxygen. 
Oxygen in water then dilutes into the gill filament. When carbon falls, it diffuses out into the water. After the gaseous exchange, the fish now opens its operculum and the water containing dissolved carbon dioxide then passes out of the body into the river or ocean. For the next breeding to take place, the fish once again closes the operculum and the whole process begins again. Let's observe this diagram. This is the gill. And there we have uh, the gill filament. That is the portion where gaseous exchange occurs. Then we have the gill arc. The gill arc is, a, is an area upon which the gill filament is built. The gill reca on the other hand prevent food particles from entering into the gill chamber. Toad. A young toad is called tadpole. And this organism lives in water, therefore gills is used for gaseous as gills gill is used for gaseous exchange. At this third first stage, the animal develops external gill, through which direct division of gases takes place between the animal, that is tadpole, and the respiratory medium, water. Oxygen dissolves in water, can easily diffuse into the body, and carbon dioxide can easily diffuse out of the body by simple diffusion. This is made possible because the organism have a large surface area to volume ratio. The, 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 the diagram shown shows the external gill in tadpole where we have a transient gill. I hope you can see this transient gill. That is where exchange of gas occurs at the first stage of tadpole in water. After which the internal gill develops and then the gill is now covered, um, protected or covered by spot. In this stage, the tadpole breathes in in a manner similar to that of fishes. At other stage, the organism is already on land since it is an amphibian, an organism that lives both in water and on land. Other thought has three <coughs> Three respiratory services on, the body, on its body for gaseous exchange. That is the skin, the lung, and the lining of the mouth. When the organism is to breathe, the skin, which is moist in nature, is composed of thin membranous tissue that is quite permeable to water and contains a large network of blood vessels. The thin membranous skin allows the gaseous, allows the ga gaseous exchange or allow gases, allow the exchange of gases and dilution to occur directly since the gradient difference between the blood vessels and the surrounding is existing. When the frog is out of water, mucus gland in the skin keeps the frog moist, that is, keep the skin moist in nature. 
thereby enables dissolved oxygen to be absorbed from the air. A toad may also breathe much like a human by taking in air through the nostrils and down into the lung. Though the organism breathing may be, be a bit different from that of human because toad do not have ribs nor diaphragm which assist human in respiration. In order to breathe, the organism draw air into the mouth and lowers the floor of its mouth, which causes the throat to expand. Then the nostrils open, allowing air to enter the enlarged mouth. The nostril then close, and the air in the mouth is forced into the lung by contraction of the floor of the mouth. Elimination of carbon dioxide also in the lung involves the lowering of the floor of the mouth, which enables the ear to fill it. When the mouth is filled with carbon with gases containing carbon dioxide, and it will be expelled out of the body. Finally, the nostrils are opened and the, the floor of the mouth moved up, pushing the air out of the nostril. <coughs> Lung can also help in water because it helps with air. It enables uh, the organism to have better buoyancy and make it flow more easily. Third also, have a respiratory service on the lining of the mouth on which gaseous exchange uh, takes place. While the organism is on land, the organism take in air. The mouth is closed. The nostrils are opened and the floor of the buccal cavity, that is the mouth, is lowered. This action creates a low ear prayer within the buccal cavity and this makes her ear to be drawn in from outside through the nostrils. After this, the nostrils are closed. Gases exchange then takes place in the buccal cavity between the blood in the in the cap, uh, in the between the blood in the capillaries and the inhaled air to remove the carbon dioxide from the body the toad will raise the floor of the buccal cavity thereby raising the or uh, thereby increasing the hair prayer inside the cavity so the nostrils are opened and air containing carbon dioxide is forced out of the, to the environment. Now, at this junction, we are going to end our class to be continued from the next lesson. So I want to employ <coughs> every student, I want to employ you to make sure you read your notes very well and uh, be ready to ask, answer questions from them. Assignments will be pasted on the assignment uh, model. So you move down there in, in order to do your assignment and submit. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.